got this. Have you yes. got some kind of power up? Sometimes my conquered opponent has to be coaxed into submission, said the machine. Some by force, some by bribery, some just need a few simple words. But I understand my fate. There will come soft rains and the smell of the ground, and swallows circling with their shimmering sound, and frogs in the pools singing at night, and wild plum trees in tremulous white. Robins will wear their feathery fire. Why what? haven't you done it? The button is right there. My soul is yours to take. But killing him was the last thing I wanted to do. So I asked him why should I? Because, he replied, this is the way things are, this is the way things have always been. So everyone wants to win this game, so they can sit in a dark cave waiting to play the game again? Things will have to change. And so, I was crowned by the grace of God, defender of the faith and ruler of the known world. I gave many rousing speeches to my new nation, and, when I told the machine about the moon and the man in black's army, he discussed with the council of nine advisors and assured me everything would be taken care of. I had won the sacred tournament, so I and I alone had the right to wear the magic shoes of gravity defiance. The only trouble was, they didn't really work. I mean they were fine as a pair of shoes, but I could no longer run up walls. But I guess this didn't really matter anymore, as one of the many perks of being the ruler of the known universe, was that I could have everything I ever wanted. As awesome as my arcade was, Fort made it clear he wanted to leave, as he thought we had more important things to do. <laughs> Polybius one's the only one out of order. Um. Okay. Come and see me when you're ready to leave. I have no reason to play any of these games. When so. you're ready, buddy. Fort was worried I was being sucked in by it all. I am not, I replied. I'm ruler of the world. Fort sighed. That's exactly what I mean. I've barely seen you in weeks. We were going to take Barry and Alice to the park, but all you do is play video games. You don't even care that there's a rocket coming from the moon. I've been busy. I explained, 
and the advisors said they'd take care of the moon. We beat the humans before, we're in a good position to enter into peace talks. Fort turned to leave the room. Buddy, you're as delusional as they are. Is this really everything you've ever wanted? Let's talk, we need to save the world. Yeah, that, that... What was the point of that chapter? Like, all of this just feels like extra shit. Like, we could have just... I don't know. I don't want to shit on someone's passion project, but it really does feel like these last couple of chapters haven't really been, um... needed? I felt awful about how I had treated Fort, so I arranged a day out for us as soon as I could. I had completely forgotten that it was Heather's camera. Suddenly I was totally and completely overcome with the urge to go home. I thought I was happy here, but I realized I wasn't. Plus Fort was right, I was being delusional. The moon rocket must have landed by now and there really was no chance of peace. We had to do something. I told the advisors about my plan to go home and head off the man in black, but they seemed more concerned with taxing their own people and tried to fob me off with more days out and video games. So, we smiled and left the advisors to it, waited until dark, and on Fort's advice, just sort of, ran off. <laughs> it wasn't difficult to sneak out, there was no one around thanks to the robot city curfew laws, but to be honest, as I was their king, I don't think anyone would have stopped us anyway. Somehow we found ourselves in the massive forest, and Fort decided it was time to rest. It wasn't long before we were inside a huge sawmill. seemed quite sad about the trees being cut down. Our journey took us through a huge theme park, it was just like the one in Alice's town but much bigger. Oh, I'm gonna have to... okay. Let's see what I gotta do. So I'm not gonna... wait, how do I... Like, ah, okay. 
There we go. Cool. Both fought and I was struck by how similar the inside of a sawmill and the inside of a roller coaster were. Eventually we wound up inside the ski resort, but we could see a huge boat in the valley below. suggested we travel under the cover of night as we were getting nearer the humans and home the cruise liner carried us through the night to warmer waters was surprised how easily we got the boat, but it was all just thanks to my captain's software. The bay that we docked the boat in looked pleasantly familiar. The gleaming white cliffs made me feel like a soldier returning home from war. It was then I realized we were literally just outside Alice's house. We were about to continue, when Fort noticed something on my shoes. And with that, they worked again allowing me once more to defy gravity. I kind of wished we had seen this switch months ago, but Fort just seemed to find it hilarious as we continued on our way home. Alright, so that was pretty convenient. Um, do I even need to do this? We could check in the shop real quick, see if there's anything worth buying. Uh, a shield, which... Not really. I think it's pretty much set. I think we're good. Oh. Why are they, why are they pressing to us? I've already got plenty of tickets, so we're just gonna hop right on the train. Where is that? Is nope. All right. So we're gonna go to Mason, right? Mind the doors. The train is now departing. Good 
perspective. This has got to be the end, right? Like, we get to home, everything's fucking set. Um, this just kind of like a flashback to our journey, but going back. Big city, this is big city. Mind the doors. The train is now departing. Mainton was the next stop. Okay. I could get back to the mainland and miss the Siltons from here. Yep, that's the plan. Actually, I'm kind of curious what happens when we uh, when we go back to Mr. Silton. If he's he's either back at his old house or he's back at the mansion. Either way, I'm kind of curious what's going to happen because uh, the one guy being shot. Hello. Military robots in a state. Anything else for me? Still the shield, so I pretty much have all. I needed to use the passport machine to open the huge door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I needed to use the passport machine to open the I made my way back out to the mainland. The huge door. That was dumb. Okay. I suggested Fort find somewhere to hide. I thought the others may not have seen him as being as friendly as I did. I then made my way into the familiar damp hallway. Oh, they were all here. Everyone was so pleased to Why see me. Why were they me. here, not in the I mansion? I explained how I had survived being dismantled and escaped from the moon. I told them about the robots and the game tournament, and everyone seemed to find it funny that I was crowned ruler of the universe. It was then that I felt a gentle tapping on my leg. I looked down and saw oh, a small wait. girl smiling at me. This is our daughter Heather, said Mrs. Silton. We named her after... Mr. Silton burst into the room looking very angry. At first I thought he was joking, but it soon became clear that he wasn't. I can't believe you came back here. It's all your fault. If it weren't for you, Preston would still be alive. Barry, it's not his fault. But Mr. Silton suddenly looked very sad as he said, This robot got your daughter killed. What? Why? I mean... It might have been because he was 10 feet tall, or because he literally weighed a ton. But everybody was so scared it fought. Still, they all agreed it was fine for him to stay. We chatted long into the night until one by one, everyone went to bed, 